the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, invite you to enjoy life, Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard, directed by Mac Benoff, and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum are glad to bring you life with Luigi because they feel it's a friendly, good-natured show that offers you relaxation and enjoyment. And you know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum offers you relaxation and enjoyment, too. It's pleasant to chew on a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint whether you're working, shopping, listening to your radio, or doing just about anything. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good. It's refreshing. And the good, easy chewing gives you comfort and satisfaction. So chew Wrigley Spearmint Gum often, every day. Millions enjoy it, and you will, too. Now, Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum brings you Luigi as he writes another letter describing his adventures in America to his mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia. Just like in Italy, the American people, they love their little kids. And they do lots of things to make them happy. You go on a movie, right away is a peanuts, a jelly beans, a popsicorn, a chocolate, a tuna gum, ice cream, drinks, a candy, everything. <laughs> Mamma mia, I think every time a kid goes to the movies, they gain 10 pounds. <laughs> and I wish you could see all the playgrounds that they got here. Playgrounds, Mamma Mia, that's the place the kids go after they break up everything in the house. <laughs> then they got to what's it called a summer camp. It's a place where the kids spend the whole summer running, jumping, riding, swimming, hiking. It's a very good thing for children because it makes them so tired they got to sit still in a school for the rest of the year. <laughs> and that's why I write to you today, Mamma Mia, because this week my school is going to have something what's it called a bazaar. And uh, that's uh, for the lunches. Because all is in the school, they give the kids the lunches. And this is bizarre. We're going to try to raise $1,000 so the poor kids who go to my school in the daytime, they're going to have a free lunches all next term. Free lunches. Who knows, Mamma Mia. Someday, maybe they're going to give them a free breakfast, free dinner. And all the American the kids, they're going to grow up for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to be very happy to do my share to help out with this bazaar. And tonight in my night school, I'm going to be the first one to buy a ticket. America, I love you. You like a papa to me. From the ocean to ocean. Yo, I, I tell you, friends, there's nothing like a bazaar. Hot dogs, hamburgers, pancakes, ice cream, sandwiches, soda, pop... No, Olsen, Olsen, stop already. You're making my appendix nervous. <laughs> Ach, my fellas. We are really going to have fun at this bazaar. Yeah. Hey, Schultz, oh, uh, uh, what else do we do at this bazaar besides eating? Let me explain, Schultz. Yes. You see, Luigi, here's the way it works. We get businessmen from the neighborhoods to contribute merchandise from their stores. Then we sell it at the bazaar for cut rate. And the money pays for the kids' free lunch farms. Oh, then maybe, maybe I can give some things to sell from my antique shop, huh? Sure. I got it a better idea, Luigi. Put numbers on that old spinning wheel you got, and we're going to make a fortune for no less. <laughs> <laughs> Schultz, they tell me you're donating a lot of stuff from your delicatessen. Ah, yeah. 40 pounds of hot dogs, 12 fried breads, 10 salamis, 3 whole corned beefs, a barrel of pig's knuckles. Uh a whole barrel? Say, when Schultz gives pig's knuckles, he gives whole hogs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also giving a sack of potatoes, six liverwursts, eight balonies. Hey, Schultz, uh, you, you, you got to empty out your whole store. That's right. The next day, we got to run another bazaar for the benefit of Schultz. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what is money, fellas? Besides, it's all deductible. <laughs> well... I'm contributing, too. I gave... Quiet, gentlemen. Miss Balding. Good evening, class. Good, Good evening, Miss Balding. Class, I've, I've got a little bad news for you today. As a matter of fact, two pieces of bad news. Mm. Do you mean you, you're going to give us a big test today, Miss Balding? 
Luigi, please, don't put any horrible ideas into her head. <laughs> Miss Spaulding, maybe you save the bad news for later and we talk of good news first. What's with the bazaar? That is the first piece of bad news, class. There will be no bazaar. Huh? No, no bazaar? What happened, Miss Spaulding? Well, to put it bluntly, we couldn't get enough things to sell. You mean the business of people don't want to chip in things? In? That's a shame. Some people are a lot of loony men. Come poo. Oops. <laughs> Losing our tempers won't help us very much, class. You can't force people to give things away. Besides, the small businessman has a tough enough time without... Yeah, but, but a free lunch is for little kids. Who would say no to a thing like this? Well, it's not that they're against the idea, Mr. Basco. It's just that there are not enough merchants that want to help. We had to raise a $1,000. That's too bad. Some people forget their own childhood. Some people never had it a childhood. They went straight from kindergarten to the unemployment insurance line. <laughs> They used to talk. If that's the way the people want it, then we forget the bazaar and that's all. Uh, Miss Spaulding, you, you said there was uh, more bad news. Well... Uh, good evening, Miss Spaulding. Oh, uh, good evening, Mr. Orth. The principal. Mr. Orth, I haven't told them the bad news about the Board of Education's economy measure. Uh, uh, would you tell them, please? Uh, yes. Gentlemen, since the bazaar idea has fallen through, the Board of Education has decided to supply the funds for the free lunches out of their central budget. Hooray! Hooray! However, Hooray! however, in order to trim the school budget, Miss Spaulding will have to give up this night school class and teach only her day school pupils. What? what? These are the orders from the head of the board. Mamma mia, it can't be true. Mr. Orth, maybe if you talk to this head board... I'm afraid it's out of my hands now. Mr. Orth, you mean we all got to quit night school? Himmel, they are sending us back to the pool rooms. <laughs> we become juvenile delinquents. It isn't quite that bad, gentlemen. This class will be merged with another night school class using their regular teacher. And we lose Miss Spaulding? Ach, there ain't another teacher in the whole country who could stand me for five minutes. Not even our Miss Brooks. <laughs> Mamma mia, what's that? They're going to be school without the Miss Spaulding. It won't be the same. Gone the pleasure of being kept after school. <laughs> Class, we have to follow orders. Uh, Mr. Ort, uh, if I might ask a question. Certainly. Uh, whose class will we be merged with and, and when do we start? It's effective immediately. And you will all go to Mr. Hines' class. Oh. Mr. Hines? The strictest teacher in Chicago. Him, we got an education with the firing squad. <laughs> Martinet, true and true. Martinet, he's a bayonet. <laughs> they are only choking. They are a big mistake. I'm afraid my hands are tied, oh. gentlemen. You will all go to Mr. Hines' class immediately. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I'm sorry, class. Not the more than us, Miss Spalding. School just won't be the same. Uh, Mr. Ort said we were to join Mr. Hines now. All right, fellas. Stand up. Put your hands over your heads and follow me to Devil's Island. <laughs> Luigi, listen. Silence. Uh, I caught you, Mr. Schultz. Yeah. And you know the penalty for whispering in my class, don't you? Hanging? <laughs> you'll find out the next time you try it. I'll call the roll, and you'll answer to your names. Mr. Ambers? Here, sir. Mr. Basco? Here. Hear what? Huh? Hear what? I don't hear nothing. <laughs> hey, here, sir. Here, sorry. Remember that. <laughs> Mr. Horowitz? Here, sir. Mr. Jaguar? Here, sir. Mr. Olson? Here, sir. Schultz? Here. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, is that the way you answered the roll call in your own class? Yeah. You never said here, sir? Ach, no, Miss Spaulding is a woman. <laughs> in that case, you'd say, here, ma'am. Here, ma'am? Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am! <laughs> he sounds like the successor to Al Jolson. <laughs> And I said you would say, here, ma'am. Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you may have a zero 
for that remark. Two zeros. You new pupils, listen and listen hard. You'll find out very soon that my reputation for strictness has been well earned. I have no patience with ignorance, with absentees, with smart alecks, and with troublemakers. I'm here to educate, and I'll educate you if I have to break you to do it. Understand? When does the next boat leave for Korea? <laughs> that makes three zeros, Mr. Schultz. <laughs> Himmel, it's like D-Day, and we got a zero hour. <laughs> that makes four zeros. One more, and you go down to the principal. Does that penetrate your skull, Mr. Schultz? Yes. Yes, what? Yes, Sergeant. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, I pooped out. I mean... <laughs> Yes, sir, sir, sir. That's better, that's better. All right, class. Close your books. I will give you an oral test now, and the marks will count heavily toward your final grade, so think hard. Mr. Basco! I mean, oh, sorry. Mr. Basco, stand up when I'm talking to you. Get up! Ice front. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Clasp hands behind back. Yes, sir. Now they put the handkerchief around the eyes. <laughs> Mr. Basco, how are the powers of the government divided in the United States? And is it between a federal and a state the government? Do the state governments have constitutions? Yes, sir. Name the three branches in your state government. A legislative, uh, executive, and a judicial. Hmm. Please, I can sit down now. Oh, don't, Luigi. The chair might be wired with the electric. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Horowitz? Oop. I mean, oops. <laughs> Eight duties of the state legislature. Mr. Hine, please, would you mind repeating the question? I forgot it. Begin answering the question immediately or take a zero. Eight duties of the state legislature. One day establish the school. Correct. I guess right. <laughs> Mr. Horowitz, you guessed? Certainly not. Go on. Well... The other seven duties, uh, I'll have to guess a little. Zero, sit down. Thank you. <laughs> now then, let me see. <clears throat> Mr. Olson, why do you have your hand raised? Uh, Mr. Hine, with your permission, I would like to name the eight duties of the state legislature. Mr. Olson, I never ask for volunteers. Mr. Schultz! <laughs> Mr. Hine, I didn't volunteer. No, you were not. <laughs> Answer the question. I can't. Why not? I don't know. I guess I must be 4F. <laughs> All right, Mr. Schultz. I'm fed up. Down to the principal's office for you at once. <laughs> yes, sir. Come here, Quell. If the door's open, run for your life! <laughs> Hey, Schutz, what did the principal say to you? Ah, what could he say? He yelled on me a little. I said that wouldn't happen again. I looked on him like I meant it, and he looked on me like he knew I didn't. <laughs> Fellas, it's no good. No good. We got to get Miss Spaulding back. Sure, if, if he could only make that bizarre workout, by golly. Yeah, sure. Then a board education wouldn't try to save money on Miss Spaulding. But how? If people won't help out, how can we bring the bazaar back to life? I don't know, but we must. Joho, that, that, that's right. We, we must. Sure. Smile. Remember, where there's a will, there's a way. But I sure suppose we don't find no way. Then with Mr. Hine, we might as well all start writing out our will. <laughs> Before we return to life with Luigi, here's an easy, inexpensive way to make a lot of boys and girls happy this coming Halloween. When the youngsters in your neighborhood come calling tricks or treats, give them Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Wrigley's Spearmint's a delicious treat that they really go for. It's wholesome and healthful, too. And at very little cost, you can have plenty on hand for every boy and girl who rings your bell. 
So be ready for Halloween tricks or treats. Get some packages or a box or two of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. And when the little goblins and spooks come to your door, treat them to Wrigley's Spearmint. They'll really appreciate it. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Well, Mamma Mia, was, was I have a terrible couple of days with Mr. Hine. So far, I've got 12 zeros. Other which has got 11. Olsen has only got the one. And the Schultz? Mamma Mia, he's got the no zeros. He spent all the time in the principal's office. <laughs> Then we was to decide it's time we should have a meeting in my antique shop and figure out what we should do. I now call to order the United Nations of North Halstead Street. <laughs> the delegate from Israel will begin by reading the minutes of the last meeting. What minutes? All right. That takes care of the minutes. <laughs> Any old business? Any new business? Hmm, business is pretty terrible today. <laughs> Mr. President? I recognize the delegate from Italy. Mr. President, we call this meeting so we could figure out some way how we can run the bazaar. Yeah, but before we go any further, the delegate from Sweden will list all the grievances against our common enemy, Mr. Hein. <laughs> <clears throat> he has refused to treat us with dignity and fairness. He has robbed us of our self-respect and plundered us of our willpower by cruel, unusual, and unnecessary tests. He has unduly burdened us with homework, with the purpose of fatiguing us into submission. He has, in short, shown himself to be a tyrant, an unfit to rule, a free group of Americans. Thank you, Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> around the feather and sign the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> Mr. President, I think we're wasting time with Mr. Hine. If we figure out how we can run the bazaar, then we're going to make the thousand dollars and get back to Miss Spalding. Right. But we can run the bazaar unless we get more merchandise to sell. Yo, hoy, and we can't get merchandise unless the merchants supply it. So what do you think, Mr. President? I think I wait till November let the new president take over the head. <laughs> <laughs> well, fellas, it is exactly for this purpose that we call this meeting. And it is for exactly this purpose that I have a solution. Who yes, well, yes, yes, yes. well, first we gotta convince all the merchants in the neighborhood that the bazaar would be good for their business. Ah, sure. After eating in my delicatessen, the doctors in the neighborhood are gonna be busy for me. <laughs> <laughs> With all the ketchup and the mustard, is it gonna be on everybody's sleeves and then the cleaning stores that they're gonna make them more money. Yo, ho, and the shoemakers will have hundreds of shoes to sign. Yo, we're going to start such a wave of prosperity, the inflation is going to have inflation. <laughs> now, that's not it exactly. The main point is, if the merchants don't want to donate their merchandise, let them give it to us on consignment at wholesale prices. On a consignment? You mean like I get to my merchandise? They give me now, I take my profit, and pay back later, huh? Perfect. We'll have to sell more. But at least it's a way out. Horowitz, that's an excellent idea. Thank you. Here in the bazaar is going to be a success. <laughs> you are wonderful. And I am still giving my food for nothing on consignment. On a consignment or for nothing? Sure, so what do you mean? It means you can take the food now and have the heartburn later. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Graham. This is Horowitz. I'm calling about the bazaar. Look, we don't want your shoes for nothing. But could you let us have maybe about 50 pairs of shoes wholesale on consignment? Wonderful. No, no, don't send them. I'll be over in 10 minutes with an empty push cart. Uh, Mr. Morton, if you would like to sell some of your dresses at wholesale, that might build up a lot of goodwill for you in the neighborhood. Well... Good! Your heart spoken like a true blue Yankee <laughs> news. <laughs> Listen, Sam, it's for the bazaar. Sure it's going on. Yeah, I want three hundred dollars of your best toys. Unconsignment wholesale. What? We can get it ten percent below cost? Oh, that's wonderful. Sam, in your honor, I'm going to name the best dish in my delicatessen after you. French fried pinkus. <laughs> 
Luigi, stop talking. I think the whole thing is a waste of time. Pascal, you, you mean you don't think the kids should have free lunches? I say skip the lunches, let them eat the heavy suppers. <laughs> You, you can't demean this. You're a papa yourself. <laughs> sure. I'm only teasing you, little banana nose. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me what you want from my restaurant for this bazaar, and you got it. Free of charge. Free? Oh, Pascal, you're wonderful. <laughs> you just do me one little favor, Louis. <laughs> Le favor, what the little favor? Uh, this bazaar is going to have a kissing booth. Sure. And you ain't got a girl for it yet. No. <laughs> we talk about it later. <laughs> then, then, then you're going to supply all the spaghetti, huh? Don't worry, little cabbage puss. Not only spaghetti, but I'm going to supply enough of meatballs to kill off of the whole city. <laughs> Yeah? Oh, your idea was wonderful. I had a bazaar. It's a big success. Ain't it a wonderful bazaar, Luigi? The way the people are buying. We should make way over a thousand dollars. Not only our neighborhood, but people from miles around have come here. How's Schultz are doing about the delicatessen stand? Marvelous. Huh? Me, myself, Luigi, I ate so much of Schultz's salami, you could tie a rope around my neck and hang me up in the window. Mamma <laughs> <laughs> mia, look at the crowd around his bush. Yeah. Luigi, Harvard, look. Well, these vultures are cleaning me out. <laughs> Three more liverwurst sandwiches, please. Yeah, lady, coming up. Plenty of mustard. We like mustard. Yeah, all right, yeah, sure. Please, more mustard. <laughs> look, lady, here's a whole jar. Jump in. <laughs> Smile, be happy. Enjoy the bazaar, lady. Oh, you're making out good, huh, Schultz? You think we'll make the $1,000 tonight, Schultz? Ach, it's in the bag. You know, I spoke to Olsen before. He's in the dress department. And he says they got such wonderful bargains there, one little woman bought up $50 worth. Oh, Olsen must be happy, huh? Ach, no, the little woman wants Mrs. Olsen. <laughs> Well, uh, young Benjamin, uh, I sold out all the best. Oh, right, right, that's good, good, good. wonderful. Yeah, and it's a good thing my wife wears only one size. Well, you'll excuse me, people. i got to find Mrs. Horowitz somewhere in the crowd. Oh, I, I, I saw her trying on a few pair of shoes at the shoe counter. A few pairs? She must have grown ten more feet since I left. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look, Miss Spaulding. Uh, hello, Miss Spaulding. Isn't it wonderful? Are you having a nice time, Miss Spaulding? Yes, marvelous. I bet you were a little surprised how we swung into action, huh? I'm very proud of all of you. Uh, how's Mr. Hine treating you? Fellas, yeah. should we take off our shirts and show us the marks? <laughs> Miss Spaulding, we gotta get you back with the class. And are we gonna do it tonight? Yes, we're gonna do it. Hey, hey, Luigi, hello, everybody. Hello. Hey, Pascal, you, you sold all your spaghetti? Almost. Uh, I put a rosa in a charge, uh, and in the last half hour, I've been playing with some game where you throw baseballs. Uh, look at the Cupid doll I won. Must be worth at least five dollars. And how much does it cost you to win it, Pascal? Eighteen dollars, I guess, <laughs> my <laughs> Who cares? It's for the little kids. That's <laughs> right. There's nothing too good for the little kids, Pascari. Yeah. Hey, there's a Rosa. A Rosa. Rosa, come over here, my little rye, Chris. Come over here. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> Papa, I sold out all the spaghetti. Good, good. Where's the money? What money? I bought it all for myself. <laughs> Huh? $1,996? $97? $98? $99? And uh, the, uh, I put in four cents and we got it $2,000! Enough free lunch to stop every kid in Chicago. Hey! Friends, we did it, we did it, and we saved oh. yeah. uh, uh, Just a minute, gentlemen. What's wrong, Olsen? We bought the goods on consignment. Huh? Himmel. We only get a third of that money. Quick, Olsen, Olsen, figure it out. Huh? Yeah. Well, I am yeah. sorry to say, there's uh, $1,233 for them and 667 for us. Yeah. And we still need $333 to make a thousand. But, friends, what that means? Bad. Uh, that means we failed. Yeah. Back we go to solitary confinement with Mr. Hines. <laughs> Hey, 
attention. Hi, <laughs> huh? Sit erect. All right. First question. Give 20 causes and 20 results of the Revolutionary War. Mr. Schultz. <laughs> I like that. 20 causes and 20 results. Proceed. <laughs> well, the one... Uh, don't uh, stammer. Do you know or don't you know? I, uh, I, I, I'll I, give you five seconds for the answer. Only five seconds? They give you more time than that on any quiz program. <laughs> Zero. Oh. Sit down. Mamma mia, I'm an extra. All right, Mr. Um, Good evening, oh. gentlemen. Hello. Miss Spaulding and the principal. Uh, Mr. Hine, may I interrupt for a moment? Certainly, Mr. Roth. Class, I have wonderful news for you. Miss Spaulding and I told the Board of Education of your efforts to raise the free lunch money. They were so impressed, they decided to add the extra money and permit you to stay in your old class with Miss Spaulding. <laughs> Your oh, well, Mr. Orth, we, we certainly have to thank the Board of Education. First, thank yourselves. After all, the Board of Education is, well, a hand. But you citizens are the arm that controls that hand. Uh, Mr. Orth, you know, is, is again a good lesson I'm learned about America. The people, if they want it, can change anything they don't like. Sometimes it's hard, but if they try, they're going to. A perfect answer, Mr. Basco. Isn't that so, Mr. Hyde? Hmm. Uh, Mr. Orth, would you say that Mr. Basco deserves a hundred percent for his answer? I would say so. Wouldn't you, Miss Balding? Yes. Uh, wouldn't you, Mr. Hyde? Hmm. Yes. <laughs> but all right, Mr. Zero, don't stand there. Make with the benzol. <laughs> Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they want to remind you that Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is an ideal taste treat to give your family after meals and between meals. It isn't rich or filling, yet it has lots of delicious flavor in it to satisfy the taste. Besides, you know, chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is a pleasant aid to digestion and helps keep the teeth bright and attractive. So keep plenty of Wrigley Spearmint handy in your home at all times and pass it around often. And remember to get an extra supply of Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum for Halloween. Youngsters love it, and they'll really thank you for giving them sticks or packages of Wrigley Spearmint gum when they come calling tricks or treats. That's Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. <laughs> The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to be sure to listen next week at the same time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production. Pat Burton is associate producer. The script is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mr. Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hunt Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Schiff as Miss Spaulding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, Ken Peters as Olson, with Herb Butterfield, Earl Ross, and Jerry Nelson. Music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin. Charles Lyon speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>